Volcano monitoring in New Zealand is conducted as part of the GNET project and it's integrated with our earthquake monitoring also in New Zealand. And when you look at a volcano, there are three or four primary techniques you can use. And the basic one is seismic or earthquake recording. And we do that because volcanoes create signatures and noise inside them as the molten material is moving inside the volcano. So as the molten material starts to move up through the volcano, it's got to create a path for itself, it forces rocks apart, it breaks rocks. That generates small scale earthquakes, which we can see on our seismic recorders. The actual molten material itself moving, moving through the volcano, creates a signature of vibration also, so we can see that on our seismographs. Now, as this molten material moves closer to the surface, it starts to occupy space within the volcano and it changes the shape of the volcano. It actually deforms the volcano. It's got to push the sides out, push the top up. If we start looking at the shape of the volcano, the actual shape of the ground on and around the volcano, we can see deformation occurring in the ground, a, a change of shape in the volcano. We can measure that by various techniques. It, it might be by laser or infrared distance measuring. It might be by measuring angles and triangulation. More recently, we use GPS and satellite radar technology where we can map the shape of the volcano, come back and map it a while later and see if it's changed shape. So we have our seismic, we have our ground deformation. Now the hot molten material, the magma that's coming up through the volcano then ultimately will reach the surface and be erupted as lava, that interacts with groundwater in the volcano. There's also gas and water being dissolved from the magma itself and that creates a geothermal environment. We have hot water, we have steam, we have interaction with groundwater. And if the volcano is producing enough of this and it starts to leak out of the volcano, we have the opportunity to look at the hot springs or a crater lake that may have formed in the summit of the volcano, a gas plume that's been exhaled from the top of the volcano. And we have various techniques and technologies for looking at the water, for looking at the gas, for monitoring it, understanding the chemical composition of it. And looking at the, the composition of the water or composition of the gas, we can see processes occurring inside the volcano, interactions going on that tell us whether there's more or less magma being involved in the processes. There are many other techniques and technologies that can also be applied. Just visual, having a look at a volcano. Um, today, web cameras have become very popular, which means we don't have to always have somebody sitting there looking at the volcano. There are things like magnetics, thermal, you could do magnetic measurements, you could look at thermal infrared measurements and other techniques and technologies as they're developed. And you just have to apply a whole raft of technologies and put it all together, add it up to make an understanding of the volcano.